Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm Councilmember Steve Levin. I'm filling in for Chair Moya today. Today we are joined by committee members Carlina Rivera, Barry Grudenchik, Costa Consentinitas, um, Roy, Lance, Roy, Roy Lanceman, Richie Torres, uh, myself, and we're also joined by Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer. Thank you. And Councilmember Ruben Diaz, Sr. This morning we will uh, vote to approve land use numbers 209 and, uh, sorry, 209 through 213, uh, the Jackson Avenue applications for property in Councilmember Van Bramer's district in Queens. HPD and DCAS are seeking to approve the disposition of a negative easement on a city owned parcel, block 267, lot 25, for the benefit of the two development sites in connection with the sale of development rights from that city owned parcel and the disposition of a permanent easement on block 267, lot 25 for the purposes of light and air for the proposed developments. These actions would facilitate the development of two mixed use buildings at 26-32 and 27-01 Jackson Avenue. One would have approximately 361 apartments of which approximately 112 would be permanent and affordable. The other building would have approximately 120 apartments of which approximately 40 would be permanently affordable. For each development site, there is a related private application from 2701 Jackson Avenue LLC and 2632 Jackson Avenue LLC for special permits to modify the street wall location and setback provisions of zoning resolution sections one sections 117 uh, dash uh, 531 and 117-532. These private applications have also requested a special permit to allow a 91 space public parking garage. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our colleague, Jimmy Van Bramer, who has worked very diligently on this application. Councilman Van Bramer. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Acting Chair and the members of the committee. Um, the Court Square community in my district has been fighting for two incredibly important things for a very long time. One is open space, and the other is sorely needed school space. This community and the Court Square Civic Association set out a vision for the land, which is publicly owned under the ramps of the Queensboro Bridge. They've long sought for open space, or green space, park space, and of course, a new school. So with this plan, which does bring 150 affordable housing units to the community, we fought for and fought with the Court Square Civic Association in particular to deliver two incredibly big victories for the community. So as part of the deal that I hope we will approve today, uh, the city has agreed to hand over 50,000 square feet of ramp space uh, for public use, for open space. It has also agreed in writing to pursue all of the additional space under the ramps for future public use and agreed to look at relocating all of the vehicles for all of the ramp space. But this agreement locks in the first 50,000 square feet with the relocation of DOT and NYPD school safety vehicles. It is also included in this deal that the open space redesign and build out is fully funded by the developer. And I'm really excited to note that included in this deal is an ironclad agreement by the School Construction Authority to fund, fully fund, a brand new UPK through fifth grade elementary school in Court Square. So the Court Square community and the Court Square Civic Association, which supports this agreement and has uh, given us a quote from Pedro Gomez, the president of the Court Square Civic Association, uh, has worked hard to deliver significant victories. As part of the agreement, the Court Square Civic Association will also serve on the advisory board and the Long Island City Partnership and Business Improvement District will help oversee all of these changes. 
Uh, we also have a written agreement uh, between the developer and local 32BJ of SEIU uh, that all of the building service uh, jobs in this building will be union with good wages, good benefits, and 32BJ has a voiced support for this agreement. So uh, the affordable units are about 32% overall, 150 affordable units. But again, this community needed desperately to have open space and school seats. Both have been secured as part of this agreement and ultimately going forward a vision to secure all of the space under the ramps. So I am proud to support this and urge all of my colleagues to support it as well. And uh, if need be, there is a uh, quote from the president of the Courts Square Civic Association and Kyle Bragg from 32BJ in support of this agreement. Thank you very much, Mr. Acting Chair. Thank you, congratulations. Councilmember Van Bramer um, on the significant achievement for Long Island City neighborhood. Um, I wanna, before we vote, uh, acknowledge that we are joined uh, by a number of our uh, colleagues from Atlanta. Uh, we are joined uh, today at this hearing by Evelyn Scott, Legislative Systems Analyst, Vanessa Walden, Legislative Systems Analyst, uh, Senior Analyst, uh, Teresa Payne, Council Legislative Recorder, and Damon Massenberg, the IT Manager from the Atlanta City Council. So welcome uh, to the New York City Council and hopefully uh, we can take a trip down to Atlanta and see the workings of government down there. So, thank you. Hi all. Okay, and with that, we are going to call for a vote. I'm gonna ask uh, the, uh, the clerk to call the roll to approve land use numbers 209, 210, 211, 212, and 213. Sorry, or, or our council to call the roll. Constantinides. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Levin. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Torres. Aye. Gredenchik. The, la the land use items are approved by a vote of six in the affirmative, zero negative, and no abstentions, and referred to the full land use committee. We're gonna leave, we'll leave the, the roll open um, for several minutes uh, prior to our full land use committee. I, I wanna debrief with you because I, I might need um, I, 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 I,